All right, we are here previewing Texas A&M in Miami uh, in a week two matchup, finishing off a home and home that began last year in College Station in 2022. Uh, Miami, you know, coming off a disappointing season as well as Texas A&M, looking to rebound, and what a better game to rebound against Texas A&M or Miami, whoever comes out and wins this game. But it's a very decent non-conference game that we have in week number two. Um, yeah, both these teams, like I said, had a very disappointing. Uh, 2022 campaign, Texas A&M obviously number one recruiting class, went 5-7, and seven, so they're looking to turn that around. Uh, they made some coaching hires, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Miami, on the other hand, uh, is looking to you know get some wins that could hopefully boost their recruiting. They are in with some of the some elite recruits that they just really haven't been able to get so far, and part of it is just on-field results, unable to get those done, and that's part of the reason why they're not able to get some recruits. But as we look at the Aggies and the uh, Hurricanes, Wyman is the starting quarterback for Texas A&M. Didn't play a whole lot last year. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions, mainly just in you know late game situations. On the other hand, Tyler Van Dyke from Miami. Uh, he was playing last year for Miami until he got hurt, cut his 2022 season short, and he is looking to rebound this season to hopefully lead Miami to some wins. Uh, Schedule-wise, Texas A&M's got a pretty favorable schedule to open the year. Uh, you know, you could very easily start 5-0 and heading into Alabama on October 7th. But when you hit Alabama, you have a very tough stretch ahead. And the four straight weeks, you play Bama at Tennessee versus South Carolina and at Ole Miss. So this game right here is pretty big for Texas A&M if they really want to be involved in the playoff race later in the year. Because uh, those four games, and you have LSU to finish off your season, uh, are very, very tough games. And uh, you, you, know, you can't have a loss going into one of those already if you want to compete for the playoffs or at least have a chance of making the playoffs going into that stretch of games. Miami, on the other hand, uh, you know, they play A&M, second week of the season, and then they wait to the middle of the season to play North Carolina and Clemson back-to-back, then Florida State later in the year as well. So they're kind of in the same boat. I don't expect Miami to make a run. Neither do I. I don't expect A&M to make one either. But, you know, both these teams would have miracle seasons or, you know, have – you know, somehow get some wins, and they're undefeated late in the year. People will go back to this game and say that was a big win for either of the teams that are in the situation. Uh, retention rate wise, both these teams are very experienced. A and M, the seventh most experienced team, bringing in 80% of returning production. Miami, 70%, sitting at number 35. So both these teams are very experienced. Uh, I think the coaching staff is going to get this one done, and the fact that A and M brought in a true offensive coordinator, I think that's going to give them the edge here. Bob Petrino is a very decent offensive coordinator, and I think he can help A&M with their, you know, offensive struggles they've had the last couple of years. I think that's partly because Jim Fisher's was trying to do too much. We've seen a lot of head coaches who are offensive masterminds try to do, you know, head coach and play calling duties. It really hasn't worked all too well. So I think that, you know, Jim finally agreeing to hand it off a little bit, uh, you know, give him less responsibilities to help the team. I think that's going to help A&M in the long run. And I think it's going to get them done in this game. I think they're going to be able to win it, albeit by three. I think they still struggle. I just had bit, you know, trying to learn some new stuff. But I think they get it done. I think they go into Miami and beat them on the road. Uh, you know, as they did last year, they won at home by uh, eight in a very weird, you know, highly ranked matchup last year where we didn't see a touchdown to late in the game. So, I don't see that happening this year. I think there are going to be some more touchdowns. Uh, And I think, like I said, I do think A&M will get the job done here. And I do kind of see them at least starting 3-0. Auburn's an interesting one. I could see them potentially falling there. I definitely could see them losing to Arkansas Week 5. That's a game that, you know, it's a a rivalry game in Dallas at Jerry's World. So that's a game I could see them definitely losing if I'm not careful there. Uh, You know, I just... It's a and weird. They have they have the people. I mean, they got the number one recruiting class last year. They have the talent to do it. They've just not been able to put it together. Besides that 2020 season, uh, they really haven't you know been in the race for the playoffs all too often. Uh, so I'm very skeptical of saying that they're going to make a run of the playoffs, and I really don't think they are this year either just because of their you know out-of-division games with Tennessee and South Carolina. But I'm just not sure – what to expect from either of these teams. It's really hard to, you know, especially after the week one games where they play New Mexico and Miami of Ohio, you don't really learn a lot from them um, watching those games. So this is really where we see how both teams are. If, you know, it's a really close game late in the game, but they've shown a lot, maybe, you know, you can say they've improved. 
But until they go into the conference matchups against, you know, Miami's first true ones against North Carolina, a and is obviously Alabama, you really won't know who they are yet. So Miami, or no, excuse me, a and will get the job done, win by three, uh, move, uh, you know, have a nice little ring on their resume if they're on their resume if they're able to get to the point in October, November where that matters for them. Uh, but yeah, A and M wins twenty four twenty one. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will also have more previews of these games this week as well. I can think of a couple more. Uh, Stay tuned for that. Again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later.